welcome to Sydney. This morning we woke up and drove from Canberra. On the way here, we stopped into Heather Bray's Pies because they have some gluten-free pies. We saw it on a billboard on the way, so we had to stop in and try them out. And they were pretty delicious. Mine was delish. Yours was gluten-free and totally different. It was. It tasted totally different to the plain pie, but it was still good. I think there was some curry powder More or something More a curry in there. flavor, yeah. Yes, yeah, so we've driven from Canberra today, which is about three hours. And our first stop in Sydney on our little day trip here is Batch Brewing. We uh, don't necessarily recommend starting your day out with beer, although it is after midday, so <laughs> slightly more acceptable. But this is how it worked out with our little plot. It didn't make sense to double back here later, so beer it is, first up. If we have to. Let's head inside. <laughs> got some breakfast. <laughs> Have you got some breakfast? No, just water for me. I'm glad that they do it in very small portions because I didn't feel like much. And yes, there's more than usual in terms of glasses, but there are only 115 mils, so I'm happy about that. I've had that one before. Sour. Watermelon, I think this one is. No, hash. Is it passion fruit or is it watermelon? Is it both? Anyway, let's try the German Heller's plain old German lager. Oktoberfest-ish type of thing you, you drink in one litre steins. Tasman Tango, I call it the South Pacific Ale. That's delicious. Tropical fruits. What's this one? Oh, that's right, I wrote it down. American Pale Ale. Mmm. Compared to the other ones, it's quite floral. West Coast IPA, possibly a bit stronger. Not as floral, I'd say more fruity. Delish. And a milk stout milk stoutish. Nothing wrong with any of those. Guess I need to drink them now or, or can we put them in a doggy bag? Can you help me? Sorry, no. Water for me. But it's probably healthier anyway. Which one's the favourite? Well, so far the Tasman Tango. Just so fruity and delicious. Can't smell it that much but oh it's in the taste. It's all there. West Coast Pale probably has more, more flavour, more fruit going on. I changed my tune. I'm now all about the West Coast. The, the smell of grain is so thick in here, it's delish. It's kind of like, it's more than porridge. It smells like, uh, like a thousand wheat bix have just laid moist in the bottom of a bowl uh, and you just dunk your head in it. <laughs> Maybe you can get some beers next time. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right, I don't like beer anyway. The walk out to the toilet was pretty cool too because you walked past all of the brewery operations to get there. So I recommend going to the toilet. <laughs> So we've come straight from Batch Brewing to here, which is loaded by BL, to grab ourselves some lunch before we head off for some afternoon activities. And look, the burgers have come and they look so good. But there's a delicious burger joint over in Circular Quay called Bar Luca, which I have tried years ago, but then they've branched out to various other restaurants. There's Oxford Street, Parramatta, and now, today, I discovered that Newtown now has one called Loaded by BL. So I'm able to get my beloved Blame Canada made Maple bacon, it's everything. Oh goodness, it's got poutine as well as maple bacon. Poutine and maple bacon. Mm. And they don't normally have a gluten-free chicken burger because it's fried chicken, but today they have a bit of a special with a margarita brined chicken breast. So I can actually have a chicken burger here with a gluten-free low-carb keto bun. The chicken's nice, I like that. Mm, that burger was tasty. I bet Jesse's was too. He loves a good Blame Canada, which was the name of his burger. The chips are so good too. He said they're the best gluten-free chips in Sydney, which <laughs> I don't know if there's any truth to that claim, but they are delicious and the sauce is really nice. Our eyes were bigger than our stomachs, so we've taken them to go so that we can finish them at a later time. <laughs> I can't 
cool is this secret garden? We've just driven over the Harbour Bridge, dropped off at the first exit, and we've found Wendy Whiteley's secret garden. The Harbour Bridge is right there, we're just north of Luna Park. And look at this place, look at this fabulous little place. Look at this tree, so pink. That's awesome. We are hoping to do some more involved Sydney videos in the future, but today's just a day trip. So we thought we'd explore some things that don't get explored that often by people coming to Sydney mm -hmm. and see some of the stuff that we haven't seen ourselves as well, because living not too far from Sydney, we have seen a lot of the touristy stuff already, but it's nice to see some different things. Yeah, I think I found this one on Google. Thanks, Google. <laughs> It's pretty cool, all of these like little winding staircases and everything. It's very nice and views of, uh, you know, Barangaroo and Harbour Bridge and Luna Park. Kind of slightly bordering on touristy, but a little bit out of the ordinary. Oh, it's beautiful. Look at the foliage. Look, he's got like, he's furry. Would you believe he's actually furry like a bear? Struck that very wall. <laughs> Still doesn't work. <laughs> I'm useless at that job. We are right beside the train track right now, so I guess this is a relic. Look at that gargantuan tree. Woo! Are you in heaven? That is the goodest. The goodest tree. <laughs> Harbour Bridge, Luna Park. We walk through Wendy Whiteley's secret garden, then there's a staircase at the end of it after the lovely humongous fig trees. Is that what they are? A staircase down under the train line just here, and you can walk straight out onto a pier. Lavender Bay Pier apparently. And you're just standing here looking at the Harbour Bridge, wondering why only you have that view and it's not really anyone else around. I don't get it. <laughs> this place has been a bundle of surprises. Who knew that this was here? I guess they call it a secret garden because it's a well-kept secret. So now we've let the cat out of the bag, you'll have to come next time you're in Sydney. come a little bit further west of the secret garden to a place called the Coal Loader which is near Waverton at Bull's Head. This place used to be where a lot of Australia's coal was exported from back in the early 1900s. In its heyday the Coal Loader was one of the most advanced coal handling facilities in the southern hemisphere. Work commenced building this site in 1913. In 1918 a new wharf was built here at Bull's Head Bay and the water here is some of the deepest in the whole harbour here in Sydney. They built the wharf big enough that it could be over six metres at high tide and some of the biggest steamships in the world would be able to dock here even in stormy conditions without causing any issues. Previously to this facility being built, coal had been loaded manually by coal lumpers onto the ships. So they would do it by hand basically, shovel coal onto ships. This automated coal loader system that they were building would revolutionise the way that coal was exported in Australia and make it a whole lot more efficient than doing it by hand. The last ship to leave this wharf was in 1992. But enough about the history of the place, how did it actually work? So with the new automated system, they would deposit all the coal on that platform that we were standing on before up the top, and it would come through these chutes, like this one above me, down into these tunnels where there were cable cars sitting waiting to collect all the coal. Then all of those cable cars would go outside the tunnel, 
onto a gantry that went out onto the wharf and be loaded onto the ships through chutes there. Meaning that nobody had to shovel any coal by hand anymore. They would use bulldozers to push it into the chutes if they needed to and it was all automatically put on the ships. Meaning they could export a whole lot more coal than they did before this system came to be. <laughs> As you can see, there aren't too many coal ships coming to this wharf anymore. She's seen better days. The exporting of coal to steamships was basically obsolete by the 1960s, so this facility closed down for about 10 to 15 years and reopened with a few tweaks to make it more efficient for exportation in the 1970s, but then closed for good in 1992, which was the year I was born, coincidentally. Since then, the council has taken it over and they've turned it into a centre for sustainability. So there's actually community gardens up there. Some of the old tunnels that used to be here for loading the coal have been turned into water recycling facilities to service the community gardens and there's actually some solar panels up on that platform as well so they're kind of taking away the old energy of coal and replacing it with some sustainability which I think is pretty cool. If you're wondering what's happened to the other tunnels one of them you can walk all the way through and see the inside of it with the chutes coming down one of them has some old cable cars in it so you can see what they look like. One of them has the water recycling system and one of them has a colony of micro bats. So it's pretty diverse down here in the tunnels these days. There's also a ship here around the corner which uh, is in some need of restoration still but they're hoping to make it a museum and training ship which sounds like it could be good in the future. <laughs> Also here at the coal loader site are some Aboriginal rock carvings which are here on the rocks behind me. This area was actually an important gathering place for the local Aboriginal people, the Camaragal people. The large whale or shark that you can see here engraved in the rock is actually part of a larger group of engravings which included turtles, fish and spirit figures. A bit of indigenous history as well along with the coal history here at the coal loader. And that concludes our time in Sydney today. It's been a pretty good day, I think. We got a bit done. Now we'll probably go see Jesse's brother for a little bit before driving back to Canberra. If you liked this video and would like to see more videos from us, please subscribe so you know when the next one comes out. And we'll see you in the next one. <laughs> I want to show my muscles. So we've come straight from Bratch. Bratch. To a little place near Wavelton. Wavelton. <laughs> to a place. Uh, stuff. <laughs> water recycling uh. system and this rock carving here is one that is from way back in time i don't know when which included other animals too like turtles and fish and spirit fingers fingers <laughs> spirit fingers and that concludes <laughs> <She's like the laughs> <go. laughs> but if you liked this video and would like to see more <laughs> but no, do it.